North, north side of the Golden State, mob in the central. I got the great goose and nice, yeah, it's mob in the central. You know the routine, been rocking mics in the stool. Been killing shows across the map, what it do? Quit sleeping, let me talk some game about my hey, shit. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed. And like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. So with that being said, man, let's talk about it. Uh, a lot of people were giving me the links and shooting me articles and, you know, saying, hey, bro, did you hear? Did you hear? And I was like, yeah, I heard, but um, I gave it some time and I'll explain why. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. But most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. This is not a race issue. The blacks didn't turn around and be like, oh, it's a green light on everybody. This is not a racial issue. This is an issue where one individual stepped out of line so many times that another individual who happens to be black felt like they needed to put that person back in line, at least when it comes. Now, everybody's seen what took place in the prison system. Everybody already ran the YouTube channel to talk about it. But see, here's the thing. When I was notified about it, and me personally, it was only the, the only one that came forward and told me about it the first time was the the homie Rascal, the homie Hangout. He was the one I talked. He talked. Uh, he's the one I talked to on a day to day basis about certain stuff, just to have like a a knowledgeable conversation with somebody. It's never biased. It's never one sided. We hit all different angles. You know, he's he's someone that I turn to when I'm having trouble when I'm having trouble with a topic, and I'll turn to him and be like, "Hey, but what do you think of this? Am I saying this right?" You know, he sometimes he'll either put me in perspective or he'll actually give me one so I can look at things from a different angle. So he notified me about it, what was going on. He said he was going to drop a video. But by the time he dropped the video, I've seen that there was multiple videos done on it. And see, me, I'm the kind of type, like, I'll wait it out. Like, I don't want to be the first for everything. Sometimes a subscriber shoots me some information or a, a topic to do, and then I do it. And I see other people talk about it, and it's like, okay, I, I, I do understand that we're all chasing the same content, that same viral video. But when it comes to situations like this, this particular situation and the one prior, the one that escalated to this one, if you notice, I didn't talk about that particular situation. Other people have. Other people might have resources that I don't. Or sometimes, you know, it's just something that I really don't want to talk about. I honestly think that my subscribers provide me with enough questions and shoot me these crazy links or these funny videos on Instagram to give me a laugh. I usually, I look forward to those. I look forward to a subscriber questioning me, asking me a, a particular question, giving me a video to do. Other than just sitting there scrolling through YouTube or looking to see what cracks off and breaking news in the news media and then talk about it and, you know, be the first one to do it. I'm not like that. I come to terms with my channel that I care about my message and I care about what my subscribers want to hear and not talk about something that's really delicate and really serious just to either instigate a situation or just to glorify it. No, if I can find a positive message out of it, then that's what I'm going to do. But if I can't, then I'm just going to leave it alone, which is why I didn't talk about the last previous incident that took place. With the, with the crib blasting that metal. Because to me personally, and this is my personal opinion, okay, it happens. You know, it's prison. That's prison life. Maybe, and then I heard the details of it by the homie, and I was like, all right, so, you know, dude was a little arrogant, thought he can get away with, you know, disrespecting the OG crib, and the OG crib, you know, retaliating. What, what else was he supposed to do? I mean, mind you, you know, dude should have been on high alert, and obviously the black car already knew what was going to be expected of him, but as you can see, they were approached and they refused to remove this dude because I honestly think the, the blacks, the bloods, and the cribs didn't think of it as like, hey, bro, the homie did something wrong. Like, that issue, that's not even the issue. The issue is that he took care of business and you're asking us to remove him and we're not going to do it. So the Southerners blast, do their thing on behalf of the Emmetto that got stabbed, and it kicks off again. So to me, I only look at both those situations as what would you expect to happen? That was going to happen. Naturally, that's how people are going to react. See, I couldn't do a video about the crib stabbing the end metal to glorify, even though my page has been about particular situations, particular perspectives. I'm doing what I do, what I feel is best and necessary for my content and my audience and what I want to talk about. But I wasn't going to sit there and glorify like, ooh, bro, crib blasted the end metal. I couldn't do that. I, I, that, wouldn't have said, that wasn't going to sit right with me. And vice versa, I would have been like, nah, I'm really not going to promote it like that other than talk about something in particular, like a message behind it, a perspective behind it. But just to glorify it that it happened, I couldn't do it. That's why I didn't do it. And I wasn't going to do it for this one. So the only two videos that I seen was the homie Rascals 
And then the follow-up video that he dropped because everybody was kind of accusing Rascal about some particular allegations and, you know, co and comments that I disagreed with, but I respected what he said. And then I watched 16 to Life. You know, I wanted to see a different perspective from a different ethnicity to see what he would have to say. And um, I pretty much got my two perspectives that I needed to go off of this video. We're talking about a hostile environment where, you know, we got some big power players walk in the yard. And although this end of hostilities has brought people together, has brought the Raza together and united in alliance with one another, doesn't mean that you can go around thinking that you just took over the yard. It may look like that. And I do understand that. The North and South uniting with the Mexican Mafia and the NF. Yeah, the organization looks real big now. It looks like it's just one. In reality, it's two different entities, but to the rest of the yard, like the whites, the blacks, the Asians, the natives, it looks like one big rafla, including the paisas. So obviously, from outside perspective, it's going to look like a raza against everybody else. So now it becomes racial division. See, that's what I don't want. And that's what I'm not going to sit here and brag about neither and glorify at the expense of the end of hostilities was to unite the people together, the brown people together, but let's go against everybody else now since we're powerful, since we're big in numbers, since we're not going to go to war with each other, obviously we're going to find somebody to go to war with. I'm not, I don't want to condone that. I do know prison kicks off and I do know these situations are going to continue to arise and bloodshed is going to be spilled over political games, over set tripping, over big homies just getting in their ego, or maybe it might be another car instigating situations and say, you know what? Let's piss these fools off. They forgot about the rest of us. The Sureños were in alliance with the whites for a long time. Who's to say the whites and the AB just one day say, you know what? Let's put them in their place and start just going and start developing ra racial hatred and racial tension towards the Sureños for all those years that they just said, you know what? You're going to chalk us up because you guys wanted to come together for a greater purpose and different agendas. Forget about the, the last 40, 50 years that we've been in alliance with you guys. That could happen, too. I don't want that to happen, but that could happen, too. How do you think the blacks feel about Northerners? There was a loose alliance for the last 40, 50 years, and now the Northerners are, are in alliance with the Southerners. I'm pretty sure the black car, whether it's Crip, Bloods, no matter who it was, the, the Bay Area, I'm pretty sure they felt some type of way, like, hey, bro, we assisted you guys all these years. All of a sudden, it's, it's all about brown unity and forget about us. There's some things that people can actually say and, and, and create tension from, but I doubt it was this particular situation. As much as I support the end of hostilities in a sense, in the sense that, you know, Southerners and Northerners don't have to go to war no more because that's all we did for 40, 50 years was go to war with one another. Like at some point that shit had to come to an end. You know, put that banger down finally, bro, and just recognize that, dude, he's, he's the same person as you, just from a different side of the state. That's all. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to sit here and encourage, hey, man, Mexicans against everybody now. No where is uniting the raza have anything to do with going against other races now. You know, we're not going to go back to the old days where it was nothing but racial division and uh, racial discrimination and racial warfare. We don't need that either. We don't need none of that. So all I can say about this video is like, man, what'd you expect the black to do by getting disrespected by a Mexican mafia member who got loose with his tongue and decided he think he could disrespect somebody because he runs the yard because he has the biggest car to back him up, the North and the South and the Paisas. Or for whatever reason, nobody knows that dude's legitimate motive to disrespect that crib. But nobody can condemn that crip for actually doing what he had to do because he felt disrespected. He's an OG crip. He had to do what he had to do and, and took care of his business like a man. And when the, when the Sudanians wanted to ask the blacks to remove that food and they didn't do it and it kicked off, bro, what did you expect? What did you expect the Sudanians to do? They gave you an opportunity to exercise diplomacy and hey, get rid of them or else we'll do it for you. And everybody else can pay the penalties for it. And that's what happened. See, there's a reason why I don't mention a lot of, uh, about politics when it comes to the blacks whether it's the Bloods or the Crips, if I have personal stories like I've been sharing, then yeah, I'll talk about certain aspects and how it went down, the diplomacy we used together, how they approached us, how we approached them, so on and so forth. That's the best I can do because I really don't know how they program. And I say that because I always thought, you know, the Crips, the Bloods, uh, they were divided a little bit. They came together as one, but they were divided amongst themselves. Well, I had a rude awakening and a, and a messed up reality when it kicked off in Susanville in 2008. See, we went after the Northern Cali Crip car. There was the Southern Crip car. There was a Northern Crip car, Bay Area. Then you had the Bloods. All these cars were divided. So we were under the assumption that, hey, bro, we rush this dude who happens to be a Muslim that's connected to the Northern Cali Crip car. These other fools are just going to let it happen. As long as we take care of this car, these other dudes ain't going to trip. 
The rest of the blacks are going to be like, hey, man, that's their failure. That's their problem. That's their business. They Whatever they did, that they had that coming. No, it wasn't even like that. When it kicked off, all the blacks rushed. So that's why the riot was so big. That's why we went on lockdown. And that's why almost 100 inmates of northerners got shipped out to out of state, Arizona and Oklahoma. We paid the price for that. And uh, the blacks stood there. But I remember doing uh, we were getting pulled out in the cages. And I remember sitting in the cages and we were talking to a bunch of blacks, but from different areas. And I was confused. And some of us were kind of confused. Like, man, what's going on? Like, this is a Northern Cali Crip thing. I don't know why dudes from L.A. are speaking up and dudes from the Bay. And one dude specifically says, he goes, it doesn't matter if he was a crip from up north. You guys still sliced up a black man. That pertains to all of us. And when he said that, I kind of went quiet like, damn, I didn't, know, I didn't know it was like that. I thought really it was bloods and cribs. They do their own thing. If, you know, if we go out with the cribs, the bloods ain't going to do nothing about it and vice versa. No, that dude proved the point to me. But when it becomes Mexicans and blacks, the blacks are going to jump. Plain and simple. That's why I really don't talk about black politics. It's because if I don't know what I'm really talking about, I'm not going to sit here and misconstrue anything or say anything wrongfully or misrepresent a, 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 a politic or a political game that I have no knowledge of. So there's certain subjects that I stay off of. But overall, when it comes to this subject, the black did what he had to do because he felt disrespected and the Sureños did what they had to do because they wouldn't, they, just, they wouldn't get rid of this dude. Plain and simple. Now, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm against. I'm against when it comes to the end of hostilities if you if uniting the north and south to become one big organization just so we can go around bullying the yard and thinking that we're untouchable now nah, that i'm against that i'm really against that uniting these forces in alliance with one another was a beautiful thing to stop the bloodshed amongst rasa on the basis of that i can agree i can agree upon but outside of that, outside of that complexity and causing bigger complexities like, hey, bro, let's go to war. Let's, let's create race wars. Let's bully everybody else. Let's take over everything now and put these other fools in line and put these other fools in check and dictate everybody else's program because we got the biggest numbers now because we're, in, we're one unit, brown. Nah, then I, then I won't be on YouTube agreeing to, to certain aspects and certain things that take place. That's why I didn't really want to talk about this. I was telling my subscribers, hey, bro, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I'm not going to talk about it. Other people have. And usually when they do, I try not to. I do my best. If I'm the first one to talk about it and others talk about it, then fine. That we all, you know, we all created content. We all have different perspectives. We all think different. I just want to share my perspective with my audience and my audience only. But when I see other people do it, I look at it like, well, okay, then that's their pretty much that's their shine. That's their room to, to get that big video, get that recognition, get that traffic, beat that algorithm. I'll go back to doing what I was doing and which is engaging with my audience, reviewing the questions that I've been asked and having just regular conversations with people on Instagram that I talk to on a daily basis that just, you know, just want to just know me for me. Not for renegade media, not for the YouTube content that I push out, just, you know, as friends. Overall, prison's prison. This kind of stuff is going to happen. This ain't the first time. This ain't going to be the last time. These big homies that made it out the shoe, well, guess what? You know, you, you might have the power to take over these yards. You might have the power and access to control every aspect of somebody else's life as well as your organization. But just know, walking these yards puts you in a vulnerable position as well. It could either be the blacks, the whites, the others, the natives blasting a big homie. Or it could be a northerner and southerner causing a mutiny. And a resistance and taking out a big homie. Just because you're a big homie and you have an entourage and you have bodyguards doesn't mean you're untouchable. It doesn't mean that. The Crip, Blasina, and Meta was a prime example that, you know, they can be reached to as well. And it should be a humbling experience like, bro, you're out here. You know, be a leader. Be a proper leader for once. Don't start setting examples for the Sureños that it's okay to walk around and just throw your weight around and bully people and expect that like, nobody else is going to do nothing. At the end of the day, the prison environment is a hostile and violent environment, but everybody at the end of the day, before being a crib, before being a blood, a northern or a southern, everybody's a man. So they're going to react like a man should. And if you don't like it and you decide to retaliate, then by all means, put your people at risk because you decided to do something and didn't want to have no accountability towards you. Instead, you just sent, you just sent your manpower to war. That's pretty much how it works. This is the best that I could provide when it comes to this subject. Yes, it's prison. Yes, it's violent. Yes, it's going to kick off. Yes, I honestly think it's going to escalate from here. Hopefully it doesn't. But you guys let me know your guys' perspective on this. And I would highly appreciate to see what you guys have to say as well. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.